here are the elements of the picohydra system. Or, and you can generalize this to any hydropower system, really. Got some stream, build a dam, create a reservoir. Here's it. This is sort of a perspective sketch. And this is the reservoir and cross section. Got an intake pipe, some fat pipe with screened holes. Little dam. As you can see, there's a lot of little half inch holes wrapped two or three times with just some aluminum frame. And then duct tape at the end, some hose clamps. Um, and then there's a Fernco style fitting, which is three inch. This is three inch pipe with a three inch cap, and then a Fernco three inch to two inch fitting at the end. And then the pen stock. Down the hill to a jet, you turn your turbine, the jet turns the turbine, turns the shaft, uh, turns the coils in the alternator, generates DC current. So here's your live wire and your ground. And we're using a permanent magnet alternator. We got our T, two Ys, and then PEX. The brass and uh, an adjustable aperture nozzle there, and then we've got a real Pelton wheel now. And then I got the bucket. I got steel frames for everything. All right, we've got a grounding rod pounded into the ground. Now we're going to run a ground wire from our alternator to the grounding rod. So we're using a 10 gauge THHN wire for our ground. So we've got the ground wire for our alternator, and the wire ran from the ground on our batteries. And we're going to hook both of those together to a common ground that we place near the alternator using a rebar ground connector, something similar to this. This is what we're going to use. Just went ahead twisting our wires together. I'll just shove them in there, tighten them in, give them both a good little tug, make sure they're good and tight. And then we'll just hook it to the rebar ground and voila. Now we can hook our wires up to our alternator. So here's our power wire to one of the boxes. Uh, we ran a 12 gauge THHN for our power wire and a 10 gauge for our ground. So here's my set of things to remember. Fat pipe. Fat pipe means lower speeds in that pipe for the same amount of flow and that means less friction against the walls of the pipe, greater efficiency, less head loss in the pipe. So fat pipe as close to your your end point as possible. As Gradual bends, avoid 90 degree turns, hard turns, sudden turns. Well we had a T, we're not going to replace it. But then Y splits so that we're not trying to make hard turns because Ys use, have less head loss than Ts. And then coming off those reductions to PEX tubing that we can flex in a gradual bend to the nozzles themselves. Gradual reductions. When you're going from big to small diameter, because you've got to go to small diameter to get your nice fast jet to push your propeller. But sudden reductions like that, right? That kind of sudden reduction where you've got water coming in here, going out there, gives you a big head loss. So avoid that. Smooth this out. Nozzles with variable aperture. We got some nozzles that just simply screw in and out. There's this little rubber sleeve in there. Uh, we got it from the, the same place that we got the turbine turbines. Uh, that way we can tune it. If we're getting too much flow through there and we're getting uh, the level of our reservoirs dropping and we can hear that because we're getting that you know crackling in the pipes, which is in air bubbles. I'm not sure what that 
crackling noise is. Narrow the nozzle down. Reduce the flow to something manageable. Aimable nozzles. Our first system, everything was glued into place. Now we glued it out in the field, but once it's glued, once that glue is set, you can't change it. The nozzle's pointed where it's going to point, and you're stuck with it. So here's a Pelton wheel. It matters where the jet hits on here. If you hit too far towards the inside, it's less efficient. If you hit too far to the outside, it's less efficient. You want the center of your jet to be two-fifths of the way out from the inner side of the cup. And then you've got this sort of almost blade-like fin that cuts that cup in half and cuts the jet in half. And so you can see, is the water spraying off? Is it coming off in two equal sprays? We've got a system It's pretty simple, bolt, washer, you know, aim the thing. Right. Beautiful. Yeah, it's perfect. You see the spray coming off and it's symmetric top and bottom, which is exactly what you want. Finally, high voltage. For the same power, higher voltage means lower current, much less resistance, faster spinning wheel. With the alternator itself, always higher voltage gets you better efficiency. And generally, higher voltage means somewhat less current. And less current means less resistance. And less resistance on that wheel means faster wheel. And a faster wheel, in our case, with our jet velocities, means greater efficiency. And that's probably going to be true. I mean, it's not some weird special system. It's high head, low flow. So high voltage, high voltage, to the extent that you can. The higher the voltage, the more power. Right now they're hooked up to batteries, 12 volt batteries in parallel. So they're basically pinned at 12 volts. At that Our level. charge controller that we have right now only works at 12 volts. If we're going to run at higher voltage, we'd have to either get some voltage converters or get a different charge controller. Charge controllers run about a hundred bucks, so we might be better off getting somebody to make us a relatively cheap voltage converter. So we've been experimenting with uh, stacking the batteries, so to speak. That is, normally these are hooked up in parallel, but right now they're hooked up in series. That is, you know, charge comes in over here, then negative terminal hooked to positive terminal negative terminal hooked to positive terminal. So before, when we had them all in parallel, we're getting about one and a half amps and at about 12 volts, which is about 18 watts. Hooked up in series like this, the open circuit voltage was about 61 volts. Once I put the circuit breaker in, it was at 51 volts, 0.95 amps. So roughly 50 watts. So quite a gain in efficiency. Yeah, we go from 18 watts to 50 watts simply by operating at higher voltage. Here's another important do. More surface area on your intake is better. Uh, we started off with a, an intake manifold, a single pipe, maybe with something like this, say about a three inch PVC with holes cut in it and then screening all around that. Uh, we just found that that was clogging up really easily. Uh, we then went to something sort of like this, where we cut long slits all the way down the pipe. Um, and here's a sideways view. Uh, we can see the screening here. Now, that has more surface area on the table, on the workbench, but when you put it in, you start pulling flow through it, and you start getting a bit of stuff clogged on there and whatever, uh, it sucks in. Uh, the lack of structural support decreases your surface area because those slat spaces then give and, and shrink up. 
And so then again, you've, you've decreased your surface area, more likely to get stuff clogging, uh, clogging there, glomming onto that screen with the high suction of the flow pulling it against it. Some support in there then keeps it from sucking in, uh, maintains this large surface area. Then you have less suction on each little slot in the screen, each little hole in the screen, right? You're less likely to hold mud and twigs and uh, just detritus against that, against that screen more likely to keep the flow going. Now, currently we've got one of each. We've got one of this and one of this, and we've made a deeper pond. You know, we, we started off, say, about two sandbags thick and then made it more like three. Um, we've kind of fiddled with the flow to keep a bit of swift flow going through there so that the, it doesn't make a stagnant, a too stagnant pool for lots of mud to settle out. Um, Initially, with just this uh, in pretty bad weather, admittedly, we only had, say, 10 days of uptime uh, but before the pond got filled with some mud, before this got covered with mud and cut off the flow to our hydro generator. Um, now, with one of each and with the supports in here and a deeper pond, and maybe, you know, the weather's been different too, so it's hard to say, but we've been up for more than 30 days without any maintenance, any attention to that pond. So more intake surface is better. I might also put up your deeper pond, but I, I think the more intake surface is probably the more important thing. Here's our new pipe system, our new manifold, intake manifold. We've got our original pipe and our new pipe. Slower velocity going into the pipes, less required of any particular spot in the pipe, and less tendency to suck debris onto the screens that will then clog the screens. Final do. Faster jet. Prefer a faster jet to more flow to increase your power. Remember the efficiency is increasing with power. Input. Right? More power in the greater efficiency. Duh. Right. Well, I mean, that's awesome. How much? How do I get more power? But you know, maybe you open up your nozzles a lot more flow through. That could give you more power. Well, power increases with velocity squared and flow rate. No square on flow rate. Right. So prefer faster. To more. So look, I know. Efficiency curves, voltage, power input, blah, blah, blah. What's the upshot? All right. So if I've got two efficiency curves, I know they go like this. That is, they are steep at low values of voltage, low values of speed that I'm out here. Okay, if this is efficiency here, I know I'm falling off the steep end of both of those things. So, what do I do? I measure my open circuit voltage. The open circuit voltage gives you the upper limit of the possible voltages that you could use. Uh, 
And then you know, well, there's nowhere to go but up here, right? The higher the voltage I can let the thing sit at, the greater my efficiency, especially when I'm out in this steep part. And here, I know I'm also out here where my, my wheel has too much resistance on it, it's not turning very fast relative to the speed of the water hitting the propeller blades. So, and I'm on this steep part of the curve, actually this is more like a, an upside down parabola like this. And I know I'm out here, so, and I'm, you know, on the bad side, I'm sort of falling off of both of these curves, but if I climb up a bit, I'm going to get quite a bit more efficiency. And that's what we're seeing just from, okay, let's try putting two batteries together. So we've got 24 nominal volts. Let's try putting three batteries together. So we've got 36 nominal volts. Let's put 48, et cetera. We've gone to 48 and it gives us, keeps giving us more power. And so that's, that's the recipe, essentially. Um, you know, just know that you're on these steep curves and when you're at 12 volts, you're way down here. So getting it higher is all good. Short thing is stack your batteries and then figure out how to deal with the voltage that you get. The problem we're having is our system doesn't work at 50 volts. So we're gonna to have to get voltage converters if we want to utilize that power. It'd be nice to have an inverter out there, plug in a laptop, plug in an oscilloscope, plug in a soldering iron so we could do electronics work on site.